Thank you everyone uh, for joining us this evening for our, our second talk uh, in this term's uh, New Directions in the History of uh, Warfare and Violence program um, that is being hosted through the Michael Howard Center for the History of War. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Mark Condos. I'm one of the co-directors of the Michael Howard Center and I'm the convener of this seminar series. And this evening, I'm very happy to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Gajendra Singh. Uh, uh, Dr. Singh is a senior lecturer in history at the University of Exeter, whose research focuses on histories of colonialism in South Asia, with a particular focus on hybrid cosmopolitan uh, aspects of empire. Uh, he's the author of uh, The Testimonies of Indian Soldiers and The Two World Wars Between Self and Sepoy, which came out in 2014. Uh, this book explored uh, wartime testimonies of Indian soldiers during both uh, world wars. Uh, Dr. Singh is also the co-editor of An Imperial World at War, the British Empire, 1939 to 1945, which came out in 2016. Uh, Dr. Singh's current research is about the anti-imperial revolutionary Gadar movement during the First World War. Um, and this evening, he's going to be delivering a paper based on this, um, entitled The Strange Life of W.C. Hopkinson, uh, From Irrational Anxieties to Illegible Bodies in the Surveillance of Indians in British Columbia, 1908 to 1914. So without further ado, Gajendra, please take it away. Um, thanks very much, Mark. That's a very kind introduction. Um, I will find that whenever you're referring to that as one sentence of Dr. Singh or whatever, it all sounds like a this is thank you very much. It's very kind of you to uh my name's Dr. Uh, before um uh, I am going to begin. Uh, I do sort of want to sort of extend a note of solidarity in the time that we're in. Um, there must be a strike, a back and strike, uh, and do another institution to extend and show solidarity uh, to those of you here who have been on strike because, after all, um, any strike, any particular workplace is a strike for us all. So, uh, so that's my comradely duty done. Um, as Mark um, um, uh, spoke. Uh, the title of the paper will be about um, a particular individual uh, called William Charles Hopkinson. Um, Mark, can you move to the next slide? There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I was just making sure I'm sharing the screen so our viewers uh, can see. There you are. Uh, okay. Um, I intend to cover a small paper with a tale of two funerals in Vancouver. Um, during the autumn and winter of 1914 and um, 1915. Um, the first of these funerals was that um, of William Charles Hopkinson. Hopkinson's funeral uh, consumed the rapidly growing cityscape of Vancouver. His body lay in state in the Dominion building on West Hastings Street, the tallest building of the empire, uh, stay at least. And in early November 1914, was paraded through the streets in the longest procession in Canada since 1889, according to subsequent reports by the Canadian Department of the Interior. And his casket, uh, draped in the flag of the province of British Columbia, was carried to the by the great and good of white Vancouver society. Malcolm McClellan, the police, Henry Herbert Stevens, the local MP, uh, Thomas Wolfe, the local JP and representatives of all the churches in the city. There's also a funeral paid for and arranged by British intelligence, or accurately, Indian political intelligence, uh, which was the sovereign intelligence wing of the Directorate of Criminal Intelligence in India. In addition to covering the expenses of Hopkins' funeral, Indian political intelligence raised a generous pension for his widow and offered pay for the education of his orphaned children. The second funeral with which I wish to begin um, is um, that of his murderer, uh, Mewa Singh, uh, this term, uh, the Gabi Sikh Michael Labour, and an empire loyalist turned anti colonial revolutionary. Mewa Singh was hanged on 11th January 1950 after shooting Hopkins of Dead on the steps of the Vancouver Courthouse, uh, now the Vancouver Art Gallery in downtown Vancouver. At the top. Um, and then, and after shooting Cox and Dead, then bundles the ground by the passers by. What followed the murder on 
21st October 1914, was a relatively quick trial in which Miller refused his counsel's plea of mercy and set about justifying his act. I have been insisting all the time that I need no vacuum. I hope for no justice. I know that I shot Hopkins and I have to die for this. I'm giving the statement for this purpose. The public may know what suffering we have been doing. We have never got any justice from judges, police, or from any other source. I've given my life for this purpose. Our worthy judges and lawyers must realize why Hopkins had to try that. Those who always do misdeeds and commit crimes when drunk are considered correct by the immigration officers and we, the God-fearing true people, have trampled the people. Abiding by God's order can bear this no longer. Um, Mayor's funeral uh, was smaller in scale than that of Hawkinson, but attracted a tenth of all Indians, South Indians, uh, present in Canada at the time, so the five of the people. His body was venerated as a martyr's son of the battles of the time, and is venerated still as the first in line of revolutionary martyrs that fought the rights of Indians in Canada and in India during the First World War. Whereas Hawkinson is now all forgotten, his murderer, Mayor Singh, has been subject to petition, uh, pressuring Christian Trudeau to offer a pardon in the Canadian Parliament in 2017, which was really rejected, uh, a play for 2018, commemorating his defiance in court, and he yeah, had been honored by the city of New Westminster onto the metropolitan area of Vancouver, with the 2020 declaration that 11th January will be known from that source um, as by Miller Day. There's a reason uh, there's a reason beyond my own hard fascination with murder and capital punishment. As to why I begin this paper with this story of two feelings. Hopkinson was not quite the pillar of white in society with which is presented at his death. Hopkinson has styled himself as an old India hand from Yorkshire, throughout the walls, but he was an Anglican mixed race. Unemployed before the migration to Canada and born in Allahabad. In an effort to find some employment in Canada, and perhaps because of the suspicions that close to him had over his swarthy complexion, and that he may not have been quite right. Hawkinson began to plant stories in the media as Indians in Vancouver and Seattle were raising money, printing literature, and manufacturing bombs in support of revolutionary activity in India from May. These stories garnered him education and employment through Canadian officialdom, nativist and white supremacist organizations along the Pacific coast of the United States and Canada, um, by which I mean um, the US states of uh, California, Oregon, and Washington, and the Canadian province of British Columbia. Um, and then eventually uh, a recruitment by British intelligence. Hyperbole and fantasy are an accurate reportage in the governing principles of Hopkinson's reports. His murderer, Mewasin, was a not quite the perfect revolutionary martyr as he claimed to be in his, own, in his own testament. His role as the unrepentant martyr for the court in Vancouver obscured the fact that he was previously an informant for Hopkinson. His act was shamed. As much about his guilt as they were a sense of pious duty. The focus of this paper, um, focus in this paper, and what I'll talk about um, um, less of my time, um, is upon the competing and entwined constructions of deviance and ontology through the constructed selves and deaths of Hopkinson and Benson. Um, and this focus is to shed light on the multiple spaces that individual activity in Canada and the United States in the Antans, the other movement, could have it. Analyzing both lives and deaths helped to disentangle the fragile presentation that drives fantasy, deviancy, and ontology. 
in which the other was born, operated, prosecuted, memorialized, and extradited. I will return to lines and deaths of the Charles Hopkinson and Milton towards the end uh, of the paper. Um, about 10, you know, perhaps. Um, let me first begin by sketching out how Punjabis came to be present in British Columbia from the 1890s, uh, what birth the revolutionary impact of the Williams. The political life of the Gadda movement, the movement uh, of which, no, don't leave this on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking each other. The political life of the Gadda movement, uh, the movement uh, in which they were said to be part, was shot. Uh, Gadda emerged among South Asian migrants in North America in the context of anti immigrant racism. This was the number of South Asian migrants was small between 1920 and 5,000 who were officially admitted into Canada and further 7,000 into the United States. But although the majority of these migrants came from Punjab, but largely or exclusively uh, Sikh or Sikh. And between half to three quarters of total were former soldiers or former policemen. They found easy employment in logging railroad camps, timber mills, and our farms, all the general urban workers, and the rapidly growing cityscapes along the Pacific coast of North America. But the reaction to the presence of the Gumbies in Canada and the United States, uh, generally termed as Hindus or East Indians, in the official racial and ethnic profiling of the day. Was unambiguously hostile. Uh, language used to describe brown skin Asiatics at hall meetings, petitions, and Bishop of Tommy borrowed heavily from the language of Jim Crow. Uh, India was sometimes stealing employment from whites and lazy and unproductive. Uh, this is a different threat, but yet a threat to higher ranking masculinity because of their rival sexual appetites of the magical, mystical power. That set to fall over white women. Outraged white public sentiment first organized white supremacism in the guise of the Asiatic Exclusion League, precursor to the Ku Klux Klan on the Pacific Coast, such a series of race riots and pogroms, and the subsequent official collusion in the politics of race. Uh, various restrictions were imposed on South Asian migration, and it was eventually prevented altogether. Nice way to Canada and 1917 in the United States. was born in the context of anti immigrant racism. The employer organizations that preceded it attempted and failed to reverse restrictions on the right to work and the right to migrate. Moratoria on South Asian migration is denial of entry to wines and dependents. Attempts to impose color bars on certain forms of industry were regarded as being the wrong for them as they saw themselves as imperial loyalists and British subjects. We are British subjects of proven loyalty. When 90% of the Hindustanis are six, then in sick is linked up fidelity, heroic loyalty to the empire. A large number of these men in Canada have seen active service, and many among them have medals of special breed. When appeals for relief failed, India was relieved of the eyes of those that left it as a space that could fulfill aspirations of wealth and social status denied in the abroad. The Hindustan Association of the Pacific Coast was formed in May 2013, uniting the various associations and organizations that littered the Indian migrant envoys in Canada and the United States. They established a printing press at the Yabanda Ashram in San Francisco. And established a newspaper entitled Gunther. The newspaper name, recently a rebellion, accurately reflect the nature of its content. The desire to forcibly expel the British from India. The Uru edition established first on the 1st of November 1913, and Uru the Gandhi version, followed on the 9th of December 1913. The version of the same newspaper reflected the bifurcation. Of Gandhi's leadership. Divided between student intellectuals and the worlds of the Punjabi paper. It's all produced a series of articles, publications in the same register as earlier, the Revolution Society in India. 
and by drawing inspiration from these natural events, particularly the opportunity provided by coming one step forward. The Gurmukhi content different, facing evolution in the state of the religious literary tales of a battle with masculinity, remarkable at that time. Even the masthead of others, the Mukhi editions following the Sikh Shabbat, uh, upwards in the grants, uh, draws a brain in Jilatan Charles, Sidan Kali, Sali Hotel. They, the game of blood, then come before the head and the palm of the hands. From 2014 up to 5,000, the turn migrants filter back into the Rajah, towards the violence, from the top tent, to spark into the rise in India. Uh, by liberating the war and the sporadic mutinies elsewhere. But there was, however, but was not significant, it was a failed revolution to reach the and moment. By the early summer of 2015, the Gather had effectively been quashed. The political life of Gather was that um, the political life of Gather was short. It took a matter of months. For Punjabi migrants to journey from empire royalism, on revolution, and then back again. But even before the migrants were imagined themselves to be on revolutionaries, they were already being imagined as such by others. The official diagnosis of dark skinned Asiatics in Canada being a particularly pernicious problem stemmed from the aftermath of the Vancouver race riots of September 1907. In which 10,000 white Canadians, white Canadians, um, <laughs> um, rampaged the Chinatown and the Tokyo areas um, of um, Vancouver. Some compensation was paid to white businessmen and homeowners caught uh, their violence. One man was charged and the Royal Commission um, was deputed to prevent this reappearance. A young or relatively young. Uh, William Lyon Mackenzie King, then the Canadian Deputy Minister of Labour, was deputed as the president of the commission. Uh, the fact that he chose to appoint Harry Cowan, the little head of the Asiatic Exclusion League, and one of those who orchestrated the violence as one of the commissioners, made it plain where his sympathies lay. That Canada should desire to restrict immigration to the Orient is regarded as natural. That Canada should remain a white man's country. Is believed not only desirable for economic and social reasons, but highly necessary on political and national grounds. In Mackenzie King's report, of all Orientals, it was a small number of Indians in Canada that were of chief concern, and possibly the problem which required a special solution. It was clear that in regard to emigration from India to Canada. That the native of India is not a person suited to this country, and accustomed, as many large conditions in the tropical planet, and possessing manners and customs so unlike those of our own people. Their inability to readily adapt themselves to surroundings entirely different cannot do other than entail an amount of privation and suffering, which renders continuing such innovation most desirable in the interests of Indians themselves. It was recognized too that the competition of this class of labor was not likely to prove effective if left itself, might nonetheless, the numbers were not considerable as simply could happen for self interest on the part of individuals to be allowed to override aspirations for humanity and national well being. And the importation of this class of labor under contract permitted uh, occasional, occasional considerable events among working men. Stand of comfort to the higher order, and to add citizens of the family and civic obligations and expenditures to meet and a status to maintain, which the poorly immigrant is in a position wholly to ignore. The Kennedy King's solution was to attempt to force the report the Gabbies in Canada as indentured laborers to rich and Euras, uh, what's now Belize. He sailed to London to obtain wider approval for the scheme. But while the Earl of Elgin as Secretary of State uh, for the colonies was supportive, as were the representatives of race exclusion in South Africa and Australia, the India Office and the of India refused their assent. Mackenzie King pressed ahead of the scheme, 
They're trying to convince India and Canada to voluntarily sign contracts of protection. They refused. And it's here where uh, William Charles Hawkinson, who's the of the who's the uh, tall chap, um, the right image, is here where uh, William Charles Hawkinson enters the picture. Just as the King to King was robust in London, Hawkinson had begun to plant anonymous articles in the media uh, that India in a coup and the eyes of creating money, infrastructure, and manufacturing bombs in support of revolutionary activity in India from the West away. These stories impressed the Henry King and may have been published in the Times, London Times, because of him. He recruited Hopkinson to provide further evidence that the Japanese in Canada were an urgent threat to the British Empire and a global counterpart to the Indian Revolutionary conspiracies that concerned British intelligence operations in India itself. Hopkinson's reports quickly cemented his reputation as an expert on the Indian mind. He began to file regular cross-sector reports with the MPs and the government of Canada on the nature of the expedition, under regular appointment as advisor to US immigration to San Francisco from 1908, and was finally co-opted into the intelligence apparatus of British India, uh, which is drawn on Wallander's Indian Political Intelligence Office in April 1915. He skipped two slides. Uh, and he always would find his reports really from 1915, just documenting. The very posts you had here, yeah. um, leaving out obviously yeah, the uh, intelligence work for uh, IPR and the secret. Throughout his career, let's go back to slides. Um, <laughs> throughout his career, Hawkinson remained a fantasist. Uh, he developed grudges against individuals that were staunch with pro British or otherwise ableist, or figures who were only anti British in the newsgroups. Uh, such as uh, like Data Say and Bernard uh, Dance. Uh, so, like Data Say is very much a former cat, uh, apolitical, uh, actually, new age pro British figure. Uh, so, like Bernard Dance was a revolutionary, he was a chosen character, but he was very much not part of any movement. He was political in newsprint, in flyers, in letters that he was writing to his congressman. Uh, that's a kind of activity. It's only in 13, after the Bella Party had already been established, did Hopkins and stumble upon people who were active revolutionaries and had developed networks of support among Indian fighters and neighbors, principally behind the army. And it's only then, only then, um, only then they stumble upon them um, because color bars have compelled them, like Gavin Neil Singh, Dr. Monte, to provide information for them. But individuals such as Hopkinson remain important because they helped prejudice against Punjabi's slip from the vernacular to universalist, from the identifiable and still objectionable practices of organized white supremacism that could still be opposed by some Americans and Canadians at the time to the languages of law, state, and common sense. Hopkins's reports were always keen to impress upon the reader the absolute moral degeneracy of the Yabis. They are unclean in their habits, afflicted by tuberculosis, and are addicted to drink. The moral conditions in India are infinitely worse than they are here. The percentage of crime, sodomy, buggery, prostitution are higher there than almost everywhere else in the world. And this in spite of the fact that there they live among their own. The tone and tenor of Hopkins' prose enabled his swift climb from a lowly engineered immigration agent in British Columbia to a man who became a useful tool as we dissected the nativist and surveillance apparatuses of tech states, Canada, and British India, a man whose death deserved prompt and tragedy. All this was achieved because he helped to codify national anxieties into an accepted form. <coughs> um, but what of Nielsen? Uh, was he fit into the story? Incidentally, there's an intelligence autograph that Hopkinson took it back to IPI in London. Yeah. He'd always tend to like mark people out so as ring leaders. Um, so he'd have a separate code, one's the arrow with the sort of the arrow fetching and the other's the X. Yeah. Uh, so he'd mark ring leaders and performance. So it's always the same. 
Um, uh, the recent uh, morphology of Neosin, uh, oh, what part of Neosin? Where does he face the story? Um, yeah, even there. Yeah, right. um, the recent morphology of Neosin in petitions, theatrical reductions, and political declarations in Canada are quite clear. Mewa is the antidote to the perfidy of communism. Lubritzin, a journalist, just an activist, uh, was very much the genitor of this narrative through um, just the W language talk shows about Columbia, uh, the radio talk shows, um, and through a 2013 book, which is self published in the Miyama in India and sold widely uh, in Nigeria. Uh, the history he presented is reduced to three actors. Villa Singh, of Pakistan's chief lieutenant in Vancouver, uh, chief informant. Bag Singh, a Gazi revolutionary who was murdered by Villa Singh uh, in the Vancouver Bazaar for secret worship. And finally, Mewa Singh, who murdered Pakistan, an act of retributive justice. As Rupert Singh writes, excuse the very statute error, but this is what he writes. Um, one of the prominent members of the Fellow Party in Canada, Bud, is a towering leader of the Sikhs of Vancouver and led many campaigns against racism and discrimination policies. He's instrumental in promoting political activism in the East Indian community. He also served in the British Army, the late Paris of Canada to several old times with the Empire. The mark of protest he assigned his army uniform to inspire others of the same. Was also in the forefront of the struggle of support, uh, in support of the Komakaku Maru pacifist. Mewa Singh was one of his many lo loyal supporters. Weeks after the departure of Komakaku Maru, Bag Singh was shot to death by Villa Singh, an agent of William Thomas, inside the Vancouver Secret Temple. This enraged Mewa Singh, who was at his popular to avenge the murder of Bag Singh, stated he made the court. It appears that Villa Singh killed Bhagat Singh at the behest of uh, his master's late English department. The statement also makes us believe that Villa Singh and Hopkinson constantly harassed the others. Mewa Singh had no regrets for his action and tragic prayers are being taken to the gallows. It's here that history lies at the present. Bhagat Singh is domiciled as an activist and activist. And Mela Singh becomes with the idealized revolutionary and true Dr. Kata Singh, a man that fit to be a portrait and a politician to war. Um, uh, politician being um, uh, MDP for the MLA in Vancouver, who's the third of the left, as it were. It's not that this story is wrong, per se. It's just that it is tremendously reductive. The mask that Mewa Singh wore, and to that apply to him, is as intricate as that wore by Hopkins. The personas that they both adopted are the nativist hero on the one hand, an unrepentant martyr on the other, obscure the complex relationship these two men had with each other. And the um, complex independence that Gadar had in terms of power and surveillance in the global atmosphere. The act of murder, they were saying the statements he called, and the receipts which Fox and filed, uh, hint at these additional layers of complexity. So that the intimacy to which they were saying and Fox and interacted immediately before the murder, they were saying the request to see Fox and at reception, at reception of the protest. This is then greeted by Hopkinson at a sign on the steps of the two courthouse. I was not deemed to be suspicious by the numerous clerks, police, or other immigration agents in attendance. He was not searched at weapons or firearms he might have possessed, even by a man who had made his career by writing and reporting of the irrational deviancy and violence. To which all the judges were subject. Reported the press uh, by various onlookers and passers by uh, to have greeted Hopkinson intimately as a friend, the hand of his arm, and then shot Hopkinson dead uh, at 
the fringe of the required values. That's what this is. Part of the reason uh, they were saying not cause the harm uh, the superior scatter process is that he had been giving evidence in the trial of the lesson as an opposite. The testimony that Mewasin gave in the trial was not for the uh, not for the um, uh, uh, prosecution of Mewasin. It was for the defense in defense of Mewasin of his chief agent. It's just that during his testimony, Mewasin deviated from the task for him. He testified that he paid money to provide evidence to help acquit Mewasin of the bias. That Bargstein had been murdered in cold blood and not for self defense, and that he was now haunted by the sight of Bargstein's orphan children. It's likely this was not the only time Mimosin had accepted the hypothesis. He had been without regular employment for the two years before Hopkins' death, but had yet been able to own and service two pistols and evade new restrictions of owning. Carrying handguns in British Columbia that came into force in March 1913, um, legislation that was specifically aimed at monitoring uh, uh, Indian sedition in the Hopkins Hopkinson regularly filed expenses and reports to Canadian English Department in Ottawa and listed as one of his many expenses uh, the cost of paying and outsourcing his undercover agent to his firearm inspection. It's likely that this is how the person had been delivered. This is how uh, he was in possession of his two pistols. This is why he had called to testify for the Bellassing, greeted as a little acquaintance by Hopkinson, and was filled with such a dread to the part he played. Um, Middlesing occupied that layer between monastery and the sense, turncoats and not. Something that speaks truer, I think, to the regimes of doubt. Loss and yearning that sold the identities of colonized migrants, anti colonial regime, and empire loyalists into each other without prejudice. The facement of these complexities is both, um, is both troubling and disturbing. The standard because it moves to decolonize history in the public sphere and academia, uh, manifests themselves more strongly as searches for the perfect level of the past, particularly the frustrations that we now feel about our present. It becomes a new twist on a new nationalist conceit of the South, which we as Cosmos have once delighted. Of searching for redemptive anti colonial years, which would then be internalized to make ourselves whole, to cover the gaps where pain, horror, and shame may come. But there is a violence implicit in refusing to allow the dead to die, the summoning of the dead to speak and then cutting them off in the act of speech. Uh, what Jack was here was carried by the deeper knowledge of choice by exorcism, the story of double desire to. Face the line of death and then trace it immediately. The complexities of individual and social persecution that they were saying and other are sidelined this aspiration to search, to reach at the end of this redemptive art. And Hopkins's reality cannot be allowed. After all, he was a mixed race. He was famous. He was also. From India, from Alapura, a book could hide this through his performative ones. I do not mean to suggest that such acts of reclamation and against it should not be done, that more masks should not be imposed on the dead. Uh, maybe this is the only way uh, that history can exist in the public sphere when all you have are 15 second TikTok videos. Um, I will suggest uh, that it is worth peering beneath the masks that are known uh, at those uh, that are worn at the time.